In this video, we will discuss how GDP is related to a nation's income and spending and what the relationship between those two are. And then we're going to dedicate some time to looking at the components of GDP and an exercise on how to decide what components of GDP different transactions affect. GDP is like the heart rate. It is the main indicator of the health of an economy. It is by no means the only indicator of the health of the economy, but it is the premier indicator we use to look at how our country is doing and how it compares to other countries around the world. This is a circular flow diagram, and it illustrates the connections and economic activity between households and firms in two markets, the market for goods and services and the markets for factor of production. Now, this graphic illustrates economic activity. So let's think about how to measure said economic activity. Now let's focus here on one side, the side where firms interact with the markets of factors of production. Now factors of production like labor, land, and capital are valuable. So uh, in order for us to measure that value, we can look at the wages, rent, and profits that firms have to pay households as income. Now, by looking at income, we can therefore find what the value of those goods and services are. Now, that income, once it reaches households, it will be made into spending, spending in goods and services that are made by firms. That spending, after it goes to markets for goods and services, will be revenue for the firms. Revenue, which in turn, firms used to pay wages, rents, and profits to the households, and so on. Now, because this is a, again, closed system, the circular flow of dollars can give us an idea of economic activity. Now, we don't need to measure all of these. As you can see, looking at only one side let's say for instance spending will be enough to give us an idea of economic activity throughout the nation because all the income of households is spending and all the spending by households is revenue and all the revenue earned by firms eventually is wages rent and profit that goes into households again so let's focus on spending to measure economic activity and let's define gdp from that perspective Let's define the gross domestic product. GDP is the market value of all final goods and services produced within a country in a given period of time. Now there's a lot to unpack here. So let's think about this concept of market value. GDP only measures economic activity that takes place in markets. Anything that's sold illegally will not be measured. Anything that you do at home that does not go to a market will also not be measured. Now let's think about this concept of final goods and services. Final goods and services are those that are sold to the ultimate user. Now there's lots of products that are being bought uh, to be inputs in the production of other goods. If we were to count both the transactions of intermediate goods or these inputs in production and their value in uh, the sale of uh, this product that was made using those inputs uh, to the final consumer, we would be double counting that economic activity. So in order to avoid double counting, we are only going to look at the value of final goods and services, which encompasses all the economic value um, in intermediate goods. Lastly, GDP is a geographical indicator and is based on the borders of a country. And GDP is usually measured in quarters and years. We can divide the components of GDP through the expenditure approach into consumption, investment, government purchases, and net exports. All of those components added up together 
should provide us with a total measure of the expenditures or income in the economy. So we can add them up together to get GDP. When we are thinking how to classify different transactions into the components of GDP, there are a lot of details involved. I will only highlight a few standouts. Let's start with consumption. One of the major expenditures in consumption is housing services. Households spend quite a bit of money paying for their dwellings and their services. Now, that is easy to measure if we're thinking about a household that is renting their home. The rental value of that home will be exactly what we need to measure, but how about households that own their homes? Well, one idea is to think about mortgage payments. We could measure the amount of mortgage payments that households are making, but as we know, mortgage payments are loans, are based on repayment of a loan, and people's credit worthiness may affect um, the value of those payments. Also, what about households that own their homes outright? So in order to avoid all these problems, uh, we use statistics to find the imputed rental value of a home that is currently being owned by the household. So doing statistics again, we find the number um, or the amount of money that households would have to pay for their home have they been renting it from themselves. And we use that as the value of household services paid by households that own their houses when we're counting consumption. The next one, investment. There are a couple of things that I would like to talk about. New housing construction is part of um, household investment. It is not found in consumption. New household is in investment. The next one is inventory. Inventory is special category that we use for products that are manufactured or, um, or built on a particular year, but not sold in that same year. That inventory will remain there until it's sold and then switched to another category that year, whether it be consumption or investment or government purchases or net exports. That way we can keep track about products that are built uh, or uh, manufactured in a particular year and adjusting those accounts the year that they were sold without affecting where they get counted. And I will show you an example of that a little later. Lastly, about investment. As defined, investment is the purchase of new capital. This is not the purchasing of assets in financial markets like the stock market. Most of the time when we talk to our friends about what we're doing with our money, you may hear to say, oh, I'm investing it in the stock market. Well, purchasing financial assets in the stock or the bond market is uh, considered saving from the perspective of GDP accounting. Investment is only the purchase of new capital. Let's move on to government purchases. Something worth mentioning is that net transfers do not count as government purchases. One example of this is Social Security payments. Social Security payments get collected from payroll taxes uh, from people that are currently working and are they transferred to Social Security recipients. The government did not make any goods or, ser or services in that process. They just uh, shuffled money from one group of people in the country to another. So that does not fit within the definition of GDP. So we will not include net transfers. Lastly, we have net exports. Net exports are the difference between exports and imports. Anything that we sell to foreigners is going to count as an export. Those were things that were uh, made in the United States. And because they're within our country, they count as GDP. Now, we also buy a lot of goods and services from other countries. Now, B2 
because those will be counted in consumption and investment or perhaps even government purchases, we would be inflating the value of GDP if we don't take them out of the equation. So when we are um, subtracting imports from our calculation in GDP, we're making that adjustment necessary to only count economic activity within our country. Now let's take a minute and put into practice what we've learned so far. In this active learning exercise, I want you to think about what would happen to GDP and each of its components in each of the following cases. Now I'm going to give you a minute and then we'll review the results. Okay, for A, Debbie spends $300 to buy her husband dinner at the finest restaurant in Boston. If we're thinking about the definition for GDP, just consumption plus income plus government expenditures plus net exports, what we can see is that consumption is increasing by $300 and because it is part of an addition, GDP will also rise by those $300. Now let's think about Sarah spending $1,200 on a new laptop to use in her publishing business. The laptop was built in China. Well, again, this is our definition of income. So consumption plus, let's think about investment and let's split investment into its categories. Now there is residential investment. We have business investment and we have inventory, and then government expenditures and net exports. So what's happening here is, oh, let me expand here, net exports, and fix that R. Net exports are exports minus imports. So in this case, what she's doing is she's using this laptop for business investment. So this should be $1,200. At the same time, this was purchased from China. So this one is also $1,200. So if you add these two, income should remain unchanged. So because this is an import, it should not count in GDP. In scenario C, Jane spends $800 on a computer to use in her editing business. She got last year's model on sale for a great price from a local manufacturer. Now, this transaction right here should not count in GDP this year, but rather it should count in GDP last year when the laptop was produced. So how do we think about it from the perspective of this year? Well, again, let's think about our definition for GDP and let's expand investment again. That's going to be residential investment. It's going to be business investment and inventory. And government expenditures and net exports. So what's happening here is we have to add $800 from this transaction to business investment. However, we need to take it out of somewhere in order to not include it in GDP. Now, because the computer was not sold last year, it was added to inventories. Now we need to take that um, value from inventories and then put it into business investment. Now, when you add those two, GDP should remain unchanged. Yet, we're still classifying that category instead of a national income and product accounts. Now, lastly, General Motor builds 800, 800, 500 million worth of cars, but consumers only buy 470 million of them. Well, in here, let's think about our definition again. All right, so consumption is going up by 470 million. And then inventory 
increases for the remainder. And that will give us a total increase in GDP of 500 million. We have to count all the economic activity. We are just classifying it in different buckets. But all those buckets are mutually exclusive. So when we add them up together, it should give us the right number.